It was the best way to end a Friday night. That's right, the Sunfish walked it off against the Surus Valley Sabre Dogs. They have won their last two in the first two of this four game series against the Sabre Dogs and look to try and take it tonight with a win over Surus Valley. The Sabre Dogs are trying to snap their two game losing streak and get back in the win column and take the one game lead over Mining City as they are now tied on top of the Lewis Division. A lot on the line tonight. And it's a wonderful night for baseball from Sioux Falls. Hello fans, David Coyer bringing you all the action tonight on the Sioux Falls Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. After last night's win, the Sunfish stayed on pace with the Fremont Moo. They are still two games behind in the second half standings at 13 and 6, 27 and 23 overall. While losing their second straight, the Sioux Valley Sabre Dogs are now tied on top of the Lewis Division with the Mining City Tommy Knockers at 11 and 8, having dropped the last two while the Tommy Knockers have won their last two. The Fremont Moo have been unstoppable since playing Sioux Falls. They are on a four-game winning streak, including Trent Sellers throwing a no-hitter last night, the first in Moo franchise history. Congratulations to him. The Sunfish are going to need them to drop one of their games sooner rather than later in order, in order to catch up with them and potentially take the Clark Division standings at the end of the season with that two-game series. Tonight on the mound for the Sunfish, the Gunter Texas righty. That's right, Brooks Capel back on the mound. He's 2-4 and four on the season, making his sixth start in eight appearances. 9.39 ERA through 23 innings, 28 strikeouts, 15 walks. Capel started game two of the doubleheader against the Fremont Moo and went two innings, allowed seven earned runs, four hits, four walks, and three strikeouts. More recently, he pitched last Saturday going six innings, allowing five earned runs off nine hits, six strikeouts in that eight to seven loss to the Fremont Moo. He's back on the mound and will lead things off against Justin Cooper. A fastball swung on and missed at 636, just a minute past regular start time, but an 89 mile an hour fastball is thrown for a strike to Justin Cooper, who's starting at short tonight for the Sabre Dogs. Another fastball will be followed off and Cooper is now behind 0-2. 91 degrees and sunny. It's a hot one here in Sioux Falls as it has been all weekend. But it's a beautiful afternoon for baseball. Three straight fastballs, three straight strikes as Justin Cooper goes down swinging for out number one. Alan Greer, Stephen Moretto still do up in the top of the first. Taylor Justice will be batting cleanup. Ethan Moore, Declan Buckle, Jordan Williams, the 5-6-7 with Aaron Suval and Reese Anderson closing out the Sabre Dogs lineup. The first pitch is 90 mile an hour fastball to Alan Greer taken for a strike. So once again, Cooper, Greer, Moretto, Justice Moore, Buckle, Williams, Suval, Anderson for the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. The first breaking ball will ride up and away, or up and in, excuse me, it's one and one. Greer is now playing in all three of the games that the Sunfish and Sabre Dogs have played since Thursday. Curveball will drop in on the inside corner. It's one and two. Out of Atlanta, Georgia, batting 311 this season. Six doubles, three triples, three home runs. 27 walks, 29 strikeouts. He went one for three with an RBI last night. He'll chase a fastball high, get a piece of it for strikeout number two. Capel, 90 miles an hour on the radar gun again. Looks like a man on a mission. Walker Bullington, I've been told it gave the pep talk of his life before tonight's game out down the right field line. I'm not 100% sure what was said during it, but it seems to have worked as there's quickly two away for Steven Moretto. Moretto will take a slider in the dirt. It'll bounce away from Carter Tibbetts for ball one. 333 through 21 games for Moretto. Went 0 for 4 last night, scoring once and having an RBI with a strikeout and correction not, or actually yes, last night, the 23rd. I'm getting my dates mixed up. Everything runs together at this point. Fastballs fouled off for strike number one. Declan Beers returns to the lineup out in left field. Kenneth Ducka in center, Gannon Thompson in right. 
Dylan Cricket Danielson moves into third base as this one's launched to left field. Declan Beers is running back just in front of the warning track. It'll get down. Heading to second now is Moretto. He'll pull up there as Declan Beers was running back and the ball just kept carrying over his head and lands on the warning track. A two-out double off the changeup from Brooks Capel. And it was a lot of doubles last night for the Sabre Dogs. In fact, they had three in last night's game, including a double in the top of the first inning that would end up scoring Justin Cooper and Gunnar McGran would score off of a ground ball from Steven Moretto. Now Steven Moretto has a double of his own. Taylor Justice, the cleanup man, now up for the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. Justice is catching tonight. We've seen him at first base in this series. Fastball runs a bit low. It's 1-0. 280 on the season, six doubles, and those are his only extra base hits through 19 games. Last night went 0 for 3, also went 0 for 3 on Thursday. 87 miles an hour, low and in, it's 2 and 0. Dylan Cricket Danielson moves in from the outfield. He's back at third base with Norris McClure moving over to short. JT Mix still at second base, has been having a heck of a series with Jesus Licone over at first. Carter Tibbetts catching tonight. The 2-0 fastballs called a strike on the outside corner. It's 2-1 now. Sunfish wearing their black-gray-white combination. Black hat, orange S, teal F, teal brim. Gray unis with the orange Sioux, teal falls across the chest. Orange numbers on the front and back. White pants with black trim down the sides. Curveball is swung on and missed in the dirt. It's 2-2 two and two to Taylor Justice. And, of course, the orange left sleeve with the Sunfish logo on it, the teal right. Brooks Capel has the black stirrups on the mound wearing his pants high. Declan Beers, Kenneth Dutka, and Norris McClure wearing their pants high with just normal black socks, while Dylan Cricket Danielson has his teal ones on. Fastball blown by Taylor Justice, and Brooks Capel strikes out the side. Albeit that Steven Moretto double, the Sabre Dogs go no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Three strikeouts for Brooks Capel in the top of the first. He's greeted by high fives in the dugout. The Sabre Dogs are scoreless. We'll see what the Sunfish can do in the bottom of the first inning. JT Mix, Declan Beers, and Tanner Wilson 
are the one, two, three for the Sunfish this evening. They will go up against Kanan Morrow from Sulphur, Louisiana, the six foot righty out of Paris Junior College. Is making his 10th appearance on the season. He'll throw a 91 mile an hour fastball just in the mix for ball one. Five and two on the season through 10 or nine games. Two saves, 29 and two thirds innings pitched. 33 Ks, 25 walks. A slow roller down the first base line is foul as that one jams. JT makes and he snaps a piece of lumber. I said it last night when Zeph Hoffpower broke his bat in the top of the ninth inning that the Sunfish could build a pretty big bonfire with the amount of bats that they broke this year. So JT is at one and one now. After last night's game, he's batting 264, swings through a heater for strike two. Three doubles, 14 RBIs, 24 walks, 17 strikeouts. Went two for four last night with one RBI, and that RBI was his RBI single to walk things off against the Sabre Dogs. A fastball misses high. It's now two and two to the Augustana Viking. I mentioned last night that in the 2018 NCAA Division II National Championship game, JT Mix had the game-winning hit, and last night walked it off for the first time this season as a Sunfish. He'll take a fastball for ball three. It's a full count. Bases loaded, no outs. All JT had to do was basically put it in play, and that's what he did, a single to right field. He'll take a pitch high for ball four. Morrow only threw fastballs in that at-bat. And while he was kind of painting the zone or also getting... JT to chase a little bit. Other than that, he just kind of kept missing a bit in or a bit high. Declan Beers, the newest teammate for the Augustana Viking baseball team. So for JT Mix, Mitch Stroh, Will Olson, and Tom Sun, Declan Beers will be joining them this fall here at Augie. 89 inside is called ball one. 265 average for Beers out of Laverne, Minnesota. Three doubles, a triple, and a home run. 12 RBIs, 19 walks. Fouls one off to the top of the press box and over for strike one. Went 0 for 4 on Thursday with two strikeouts. He was catching that game. Tonight he's out in left field. Declan's one of those guys that rotates all over the outfield. First breaking ball seen by Sunfish today is a curveball called a strike. It's one ball and two strikes now to Beers. It's a hot one today. As I see our assistant general manager, Zach Campbell, already changing the water jug for the Sabre Dogs. The throw over to first is not in time. Before the game was down on the field and with turf, of course, the entire infield and grass surrounding it is turf. It's the outfield that's all grass. A late time is called as Morrow was taking a just bit too much time for Declan Beer's liking on the mound. Saber Dogs wearing their powder blue unis today. Red lettering across the chest says Saber Dogs. Red numbers on the front and back. All powder blue pants. A curveball will miss low. It's two and two. Red, white, and dark blue trim on the sleeves. Red hats, dark blue brims with a logo on the front. Jordan Williams in left. Reese Anderson in center. Alan Greer at first. Greer's tag is laid on the throw over again. Or excuse me, Ethan Moore at first. Alan Greer's in right. Thought I was being clever. Steven Moretto at third. Justin Cooper at short. There goes Mix. The pitch misses low and away. The throw down. Swipes the tag. JT looked like he slid a bit early. He's up not liking that call. I think it got him on the hand. Seemed like he slid very far in front of the base at second. And it was just on the slide in that Justin Cooper got the tag. Sunfish aggressive on the base pass, but sometimes a bit too aggressive that was a nice steal and JT 
It has the most stolen bases by any active Sunfish. A fastball will miss low, and Declan Beers draws a walk. Back-to-back -back walks, but still one out for Tanner Wilson. We'll get to him in a moment. That was the 56th time that the Sunfish have been caught on the bases. So now with one out and Declan Beers at first, it'll be Tanner Wilson back in the lineup. He suffered a knee injury against the Fremont Moo. Back in that doubleheader against Fremont, he'll see a fastball low for ball one. Back on July 11th in game two, is when he went 0 for 2. He still leads the Sunfish in batting average with a 385. Takes a curveball low, it's 2-0. 385 batting average, two doubles, two triples, 12 RBIs through 17 games. Has a 477 slugging, 468 on base. Shoots this one over to Justin Cooper. He stabs it out of the air. The relay over to first is in time. A double play. Cooper to buckle to Moore. And Tanner Wilson grounds into a 6-4-3 double play. That caught stealing for JT Mix proved costly. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base for the Sunfish. We're scoreless after one from Karis Park. It's trick-or-treat at the ballpark tonight. Halloween theme here at Karis Park. And well, Brooks Capel has really been, pardon the pun, tricking these Sabre Dogs batters. And well, by tricking, he's just blowing the fastballs by him. He's topped out at 90 a few times, and he'll be seeing Ethan Moore to lead this one off. He doesn't throw a fastball. He'll start off with a curveball in the dirt for ball one. But Capel is sometimes a bit shaky on the mound. He'll come in and either dominate or sometimes he'll be off to a rough start. Right now he's off to a great start as he forces a pop-up to JT Mix for out number one. Capel is just a man on a mission tonight. It's only allowed one hit. It was the Steven Moretto double and that was just a hard hit ball. And it'll be Declan Buckle, the second baseman for the Sabre Dogs, stepping up. The beer batter tonight. One of the three Declans between the two teams. He pops up the first pitch he sees, but it'll go out of play over the Sunfish dugout. That, sun, or that foul ball is presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it, Keg Chicken. Cable winding on the mound, kicking, delivering. Change up in, it's ball one. Buckle this season, 235 batting average. He takes a curve ball right at the belt for strike two. Three doubles, six RBIs, nine walks through 14 games. 
went 0 for 3 on Thursday with a strikeout, was hit twice in that contest. The 1 2 is a curveball swung on and missed. Strikeout number four for Capel. And that means dollar off beer for the rest of the inning here at Karis Park. And as long as it keeps happening, I'm going to keep saying it. If you're at home and listening, get off your couch, go to the fridge, grab a cold one. You deserve it. It's a nice Saturday evening wherever you're listening from. And it's a nice time to have a beer watching some baseball. Fastball chased high by Jordan Williams for strike one. Capel's season high is nine strikeouts in a game. It was on July 4th in the loss to Pier. He throws another fastball on the outside corner, swung on and missed. It's 0-2 to Williams. Williams out of Minot State University, 307 average, 20 RBIs, five doubles, a triple, and three home runs. Was in the home run derby for the Sabre Dogs on Monday. He'll take a change up in the dirt for ball one. 0 for 4 on Thursday with two strikeouts. Here's the 1 2. Fouled off. The count remains 1 and 2. The Sabre Dogs, as they have been all season, have scored the most runs out of any team in the Expedition League. They're just a scoring machine as Jordan Williams will swing on one. Tibbetts rolls away from him. The throw pulls Jesus Lecone off the base. Carter Tibbetts was struggling to get a grip on the ball, and he had to hurry the throw, and it was a bit high. So on the drop third strike, Jordan Williams will make it over to first base. And instead of a three-up, three-down inning, we'll see Aaron Suval, who twice now this season has come in late against the Sunfish and has been walked off. He's one and two on the season pitching, both of those losses coming to the Sunfish. A fastball will be taken low for ball one. 250 batting average though, this will be his fifth game where he sees action at the plate. Three for 12 with two runs, the throw over to first just to keep Jordan Williams close. Five strikeouts. He did pinch hit on Thursday, went 0 for 1 striking out. Otherwise, two of his four games where he's hit have been against the Badlands Big Sticks. He swings so hard on a changeup, his helmet falls off. It's 1-1. One and one. But back to where I was going with it. 455 runs for the Sabre Dogs. That's a roughly nine per game, nine runs per game. And through two so far, the Sunfish have held the Sabre Dogs to just four. Fastball outside corner called strike two. It's one and two with two outs, a run around first. We're scoreless in the top of the second. And Sunfish pitching and the Sunfish defense have kept the Sabre Dogs at bay. Here's the one, two, popped up in the infield. Lee Cohn will call everyone off. He climbs up the mound, runs over, and makes the catch. Went up and then down over the mound to make the catch, coming all the way over from first. And the drop third strike leaves one stranded. No runs, no hits, no errors, as the Sabre Dogs remain scoreless after the top of the second. When we return for the bottom of the second inning, it'll be Norris McClure, Carter Tibbetts, and Kenneth Dutka getting their first chances at the plate.
I've been so graciously reminded by our producer and cameraman and media person extraordinaire, Sean. He's been doing a great job. Put some thank you, Sean's in the chat. But I'm so graciously been reminded that, in fact, the Sunfish have held the Sabre Dogs to six runs the past two games. I was thinking back to the first series where in game one, the Sunfish just held them to one run as Norris McClure lines one straight into center field directly at Reese Anderson. First pitch he saw from Kanan Morrow, he lines back up the middle straight at Reese Anderson. Couldn't have been faster off the bat. Norris saw a fastball he liked and he took it. That's been the problem for the Sunfish as of recent, barreling up some balls and hitting them right at somebody. It'll be Carter Tibbetts, who was one of the four key hits in the ninth inning last night. Takes a fastball high from Morrow for ball one. So once again, correction, in the past two games, the Sunfish have held Sewers Valley to six runs after they average roughly nine per game. Tibbetts almost gets hit in the helmet on an 88-mile-an-hour fastball for ball two. 318 batting average. Five doubles, five home runs, 23 RBIs, one of which came in that ninth inning last night when he drove in Zeph Hoffpower. He pops this one up to shallow right field. Declan Buckle calls off Alan Greer for out number two. But going into that ninth inning, Zeph Hoffpower, Carter Tibbetts, Declan Beers did not have a hit in the game. Zeph Hoffpower would battle off some pitches, get to a two and two count, foul off a few, break a bat. As Kenneth Dutka sees a curveball drop in at the chest for strike one. He would double down the left field line. Carter Tibbetts would battle at the plate as Dutka lifts this one into left field. Going back is Williams. He'll make the catch on the run. A three up, three down for the Sunfish once more. Again, they're just hitting it right at people. They're hitting this guy. They're hitting Morrow. They're just hitting it at Sabre Dogs fielders. Three up, three down for the second straight inning. We're scoreless after two. Some solid fielding and some solid pitching have kept this one scoreless. Brooks Capel and Kanan Morrow have each only allowed one base runner, well, one base runner in an inning. In the first inning, JT Mix got on with a walk. He was thrown out trying to steal. A bunt laid down by Reese Anderson will go foul for strike one. And then Declan Beers would walk. So I guess two ba base runners in that first inning for the Sunfish. A double with two outs by Steven Moretto in the first and a drop third strike in the second would be the only two that got on for the Suris Valley Sabre Dogs. And that's how we've gotten to the nine hole hitter. Reese Anderson will take a curveball for strike two. 
out of South Dakota State University. The 6-1 right, he's batting 277 through 27 games. Has four doubles, 11 walks, and 12 strikeouts. Almost made it 13, but he got a piece of that fastball. He fouls it off. But Brooks Capel has been dealing, relying heavily on the fastball today. His changeup has been working for him. Usually what's the determining factor for Capel is whether or not that changeup starts to work. Speaking of which, there it is. It misses a bit low. One and two. His curveball's been breaking nicely, and his fastball, Cyrus Valley just hasn't gotten the timing down yet. JT Mix and Norris McClure up the middle playing fairly deep as this one's off the end of the bat into the Sunfish bullpen. That foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. Keg Chicken. That's going to be a broken bat for Reese Anderson. Didn't sound like it when he made contact, but he's walking back to grab a new piece of lumber. So last night was game 50, tonight game 51, meaning there's just 13 games left in this 2021 Expedition League season, and the Sunfish are still two games behind the Fremont Moo. The one and two is a curveball chopped over to JT Mix, plays it off the second hop, and throws it to Jesus Lee Cone for out number one. The leadoff man for the Sabre Dogs has not gotten on yet in any of the three innings. We are back to the top of the order for Justin Cooper, who struck out swinging his first time up. Apologies to those of you who might have heard that. I just killed a bee on the window with my hat. At least I hope I killed it. Otherwise, I'm in for a world of trouble. Cooper lays down a bun up the third base line. Capel will barehand it, and on... First base is Justin Cooper as he lays down a beautiful bunt down the third base line for a single. Cricket Danielson at third, I don't think was expecting the bunt and neither was Carter Tibbetts nor Brooks Capel. Capel was the one who sprinted in and got to it first. But by the time he barehanded it, the speedy Cooper was already at first base. Throw over, no tag by Jesus Lecone. It's now a runner on with one out for Alan Greer, who struck out as well in the first inning. Capel up to four punch outs today. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Tibbetts throw down. Is not in time. A tag by JT Mix. Looked like it got him on the shoulder. Alex Shoemaker in the field put up a hand. I think there might have been a comment from the Sunfish dugout as that looked like a fairly similar tag that got JT Mix out. So a stolen base for Justin Cooper. Puts a runner in scoring position for Suris Valley who was on the board first yesterday with two. The 0-1 is lined into the gap in right center field. Coming over is Thompson will make the catch. The throw will overshoot. Norris McClure at short. Dylan Cricket Danielson played it off the hop. But that keeps Justin Cooper at second and a hard hit ball out to right field. Gives us two outs in the top of the third inning. Steven Moretto had that two out double in the first. If he can get another one of those or even a deep base hit, that might be enough for Justin Cooper to score from second. And I'm really digging these powder blue uniforms for the Sabre Dogs. I don't necessarily remember them the last time they were here. Curveball almost gets away from Tibbetts. He keeps it in front of him for ball one. But they remind me, and I was talking with our producer, Sean, before the game. It reminded both of us of the old St. Louis Cardinals powder blues, which they still wear on retro days this season. Curveball misses again. It's 2-0. Oh. They actually also kind of remind me, well, no, with the red, they're definitely more Cardinals powder blues. I was going to bring up the old Milwaukee Brewers powder blues from the 1980s. 
But no, with the red and the blue, it's definitely the St. Louis Cardinals. A curveball is chopped over to Dylan Cricket. Danielson plays it off the first hop. It's dug out by Jesus Lee Cohn for out number three. A one-out single by Justin Cooper and a stolen base leaves him in scoring position. There's been a runner left on every inning for the Sabre Dogs. No runs off one hit, no errors. We're still scoreless as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Jesus Lee Cohn, Gannon Thompson, Dylan Cricket, Danielson, the last three Sunfish to get their first at-bats when we return. Trick or treat in the ballpark night. We got some Halloween theme in between innings games. That's what we're going to call it. It was a mummy wrapping contest. We had Zaf Hoffpower and Dane Frazier turned into mummies as they were wrapped in toilet paper. It was quite entertaining. But it'll be Jesus Lee Cohn leading things off here in the bottom of the third inning we're still scoreless between the Sabre Dogs and the Sunfish a curveball low from Kanan Morrow is called ball one Lee Cohn out of El Paso Texas 346 as he launches this one in the left field Williams is going back but he'll make the catch off the hop man the Sunfish just cannot catch a break tonight 87 mile an hour fastball just launched in the left field. But Jordan Williams has been a force to be reckoned with out there in left. He's all over the place catching everything hit at him. It'll be Gannon Thompson. Sees a fastball high for ball one. The 6 7 righty. 238 on the season with a 357 slugging, having four doubles and two home runs. 28 walks, 39 strikeouts. Takes a fastball called a strike at the knees. 90 miles an hour from Morrow. Himself and Brooks Capel dancing around that high 80s, low 90s on their fastball as this one's launched into center field. Reese Anderson will make the catch, another hopping grab. 93 miles an hour off the bat of Gannon Thompson. Directly at a Sabre Dogs outfielder. Man. Norris McClure, first pitch he saw, lined out to center. Kenneth Dutka ripped one into left field right at Jordan Williams. Jesus Lee Cohn looked like he had an opportunity to hit one off the wall. Instead, it was directly at Jordan Williams and out Thompson. Gets one that just falls into Reese Anderson's glove. This one skyrocketed off the bat of Dylan Cricket Danielson into center field, and Reese Anderson will make easy work of it. Nine up, nine down for the Suez Valley Sabre Dogs through three innings. A pair of walks is the only thing that has not kept this perfect for Kanan Morrow. 
But otherwise, he's faced the minimum amount of batters through three. It's the Souris Valley Sabredogs and the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Still scoreless after three on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. Taylor Justice, Ethan Moore, and Declan Buckle kick things off in the top of the fourth inning with the two teams still scoreless. This is the longest this series that the teams have remained scoreless for as the Sunfish scored two in the second inning on Thursday, a half swing by Justice. As he committed to it still, it's a fastball for a strike. And yesterday, three combined runs in the first inning with the Sabre Dogs leading two to one for a little bit of the game. A line shot over the head of JT Mix in the right center field. will kick things off with a single. The first inning of the game in which a Sabre Dog leadoff man has gotten on as there's a flock of geese that are flying fairly low over the outfield. Good thing they weren't there just a second ago. I think one of them might've gotten hit with that line drive. So a runner on for Ethan Moore, who flew out to JT Mix his last time up. Throw over to first, no tag by Lee Cohn. Thank you to Don Capel, watching the live stream on YouTube. Listening from Fort Worth, Texas. Curveball drops in just a bit low to Ethan Moore for ball one. So a runner on first with no outs. We're still scoreless. A curveball gets through Carter Tibbetts at the five hole. And they'll sail to the backstop. Heading over to first, or second, excuse me, is Taylor Justice on the wild pitch. Ethan Moore swung on and missed. It was now a one and one count with a runner on second. The Sunfish have only had two guys reach first, both of them via the walk. Fastball runs low, it's two and one. Otherwise, JT Mix was thrown out trying to go to second and Tanner Wilson would ground into a double play, not allowing Declan Beers to get to second. This is now the third Sabre Dog to get into scoring position. 72 mile an hour breaking ball misses high as Brooks Capel is in danger of walking his first batter of the game. There are so many flies in this press box. It's really starting to get a little bit of annoying. Here's the 3-1. This time a curveball is called a strike right at the chest. It's a full count. Haven't seen a lot of fastballs from Capel this inning. He kicked off the first inning. Really just blowing it. 88 through 90 miles an hour past the Sabre Dogs batters. Now he's been relying a bit more on the breaking stuff. There's a changeup that runs just a bit low. And there's two on with no outs for the Sabre Dogs. 
Declan Buckle, who was the fourth strikeout of the game for Brooks Capel, now steps on with two on, no out. Dylan Cricket Danielson creeping in a little bit at third, as is Jesus Lee Cohn at first. The middle infield at double play depth. JT Mix kind of drifting towards second. A curveball gets by Tibbets. A late go by Justice as Tibbets is up, but doesn't throw down the third. A free second or free third base for Justice. And now there's runners at the corners with no outs. A lot of the curveballs of Brooks Capel have been missing in the dirt, and Carter Tibbets has kept a lot of them in front of him, but some have just scooted underneath him. Right now it's cost the Sunfish some bases to throw over to first as the Sabredogs are most likely going to try and take second and force a throw from Carter Tibbetts to try and score Taylor Justice. The double steal hasn't worked too many times against the Sunfish. Typically a pitcher will pick them off and they'll get a rundown between first and second. A change up misses low and in for ball two. So Buckle 0 for 1 on the evening. The sun's shining bright here at Karras Park. A slight breeze, throw over to first. There's a bit away, so Jesus Lee Cohn can't reach across his body to try and make a tag. Saber Dogs really have just been piecing together some base hits today. Foul tip to the backstop, makes it a 2 1 count. In the second inning, Moretto just held on long enough to take a fastball into left field for a double. Declan Beers was there. It just got over his glove. was otherwise a three-up, three-down inning. And the single from Justin Cooper. Again, just a nice line drive into right field. Nothing too powerful. Taylor Justice got a hold of one as well, but... Nothing insane. This one's lined sharply into center field. Kenneth Ducka on the run, makes the catch, will throw into second. The run will score on the sack fly by Declan Buckle. And the Suris Valley Sabredogs are up 1-0 early on. So a couple costly pass balls for Carter Tibbetts. Put Justice on second and in turn on third. And well... It cost him a run. Ethan Moore is still at first with one out for Jordan Williams, who technically struck out but got on on the drop third strike. This, he takes the first pitch, lifted into right center field. Thompson on the run makes the catch. Ethan Moore will make his way back to set, or first base. Excuse me. So two outs with a runner on for Aaron Suval. He popped it up to the infield that was caught by Jesus Lee Cohen running across to the left side. So Aaron Suval made his debut for the Sabre Dogs all the way back in June, the first series that the Sunfish were here, or the Sabre Dogs were here at Karras Park, rather. Curveballs called strike one on the outside corner. And up until Thursday, they had not seen him hit, but they had seen him pitch three times curveballs called low in the dirt it's one and one and both times he has pitched the saber dogs have lost curveball drops in but misses just a bit inside it's two and one Went one and two-thirds innings back on June 11th in his debut, allowing three runs and earning the loss. He pitched two innings on the 13th in that walk-off Sunfish win, allowing a run. Takes a change-up at the knees for strike two. And then last night, went a third of an inning, closing out the bottom of the eighth and was looking to close out the top of the, or bottom of the ninth, rather, and couldn't get anybody out. A double by Zaff Hoffpower, a single by Tibbetts, a single by Dane Frazier. Fastballs lifted in the left field. Charging in is Declan Beers going out as McClure. Beers will call off the shortstop and make the catch for out number three. 
The Sabre Dogs score one as Taylor Justice is driven in on the sack fly by Declan Buckle. They now lead one nothing after the top of the fourth inning. Top of the order for the Sunfish in the bottom of the fourth inning. JT Mix, Declan Beers, Tanner Wilson. Kanan Morrow, the pitcher for Sewers Valley, has not seen more than three Sunfish in an inning. He gets Mix to chase on what I think was a changeup. I think that's the first changeup we've seen all afternoon from Morrow. 83 on the radar gun. This time it misses low and away. It's one and one. So I can't tell if that's his fastball or his changeup. He, his fastball has been up at roughly 90. As there's his fastball. It's lined into left center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. JT Mix lifts one over in the right center field. Excuse me. And gets a leadoff base hit for the Sunfish. First hit of the game. And the first base runner since the first inning, which was JT Mix followed by Declan Beers. The Sunfish are down by one as Suris Valley put up a run off the sack fly by Declan Buckle. And well, with JT Mix on first, it's Declan Beers up. Beers will take a fastball high and away. So I think that was his changeup, roughly between 81 and 85 from Morrow because his fastball is back up to 89 and 91 on that pitch to JT Mix. One ball, no strikes to Beers. He'll take another change up, up and away. Beers using his light blue bat per usual. Got it custom made at the beginning of the season. Has a little orange ring around it where the end of the handle meets the barrel of the bat. The 2-0 is lined into center field. Going back is Anderson on the run. It's going to fall at the warning track and roll up to the wall. Mix is on his way to third. He'll round third and head home. The cutoff by Buckle is going to be thrown, and he's going to be tagged out. Coming up the line was Taylor Justice. He actually was playing in foul territory. The throw from Declan Buckle was a bit too hard as Walker Bullington is going to come out and talk to the home plate umpire. That was some weird positioning as JT Mix also was running in, uh, he was running in foul territory. Walker is now talking about the positioning of Taylor Justice up the third base line, talking with the home plate umpire. So Declan Beers is out on second with his double. A sharply hit ball and the Sunfish are now finding the gaps and getting the ball to carry a little bit. 395 to dead center is Declan's ball landed just in front of the warning track and bounced up to the wall. The conversation between Walker and the home plate umpire, who we refer to as Bubbles, is now over. I think it was just JT was 
in foul territory and I think the reason he had to take the long way around to home was because Taylor Justice was just in a awkward position. I'm watching the replay here on my phone and yeah coming up the line as Tanner Wilson will drive this one down the left field line but it's just foul. So I was watching the replay as there is a delay when I watch the YouTube on my phone. And it looked like Justice was coming up the line, but per rule, a catcher, if going to make a play on the ball, can come up the line a little bit to make the play. And I think JT was just so far in foul territory, it was due to just him rounding third. So either way, one out with a runner on second. Sunfish are still down by one. Tanner Wilson, who grounded into a double play his last time up, is now behind 0-1 on that hard-hit foul ball. Now in their second time around, the Sunfish are getting the timing down on the Sabre Dogs and on Kane and Morrow. Here's the 0-1. A ground ball over to third, drifting over is Moretto. He'll double clutch, throw to first. The stretch by Moore is in time. Declan Beers is now at third on the ground out. So two outs. And a runner on third for the Sunfish. Coming back into the lineup, Tanner Wilson is now 0 for 2. He said he's been taking swings and his knee has been feeling better in the past week after hurting it July 11th in Fremont. Norris McClure, who has only seen one pitch as he lined out to center field his last time up, takes a fastball away. Reese Anderson in center is playing closer to left center than he is to dead center. McClure's been on a bit of a hot streak taking a fastball low and away, 2-0. Batting 3-0-5. Went one for four last night. Two home runs, three doubles, 18 RBIs coming into tonight's game. He'll take a fastball on the inside corner for strike one. He has four hits in this series against Sewers Valley through two games. The 2-1 is a fastball taken in the dirt. It's 3-1 now to Norris. So JT Mix has been caught on the bases twice. The first time he was caught stealing. The second time was trying to run home and score the first run for the Sunfish. McClure lifts this one into center field. Reese Anderson has plenty of time backing up to make the catch. And the Sunfish can't score. JT Mix tries scoring on the Declan Beers double, but is thrown out at home and a ground out and a fly out leave Declan Beers stranded just 90 feet away. The Sunfish remains scoreless off two hits, no errors, one left on base. And after four from Karis Park, it's the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs one, the Sioux Falls Sunfish zero. Reese Anderson, the number nine hitter, leads it off for the second time today. He grounded out to JT Mix his first time around. On trick-or-treat in the ballpark night, it's kind of a two-parter question from, from 
me tonight, and you can respond in the Mixler chat if you're listening on the Sunfish Radio Network or in the YouTube comments section. If you're watching on the live stream, Anderson puts this one right up the middle, and it'll fall in center field in front of Kenneth Dutka. Back-to-back innings with a leadoff single for the Sewers Valley Sabredogs. They ended up scoring last inning. See if they can do it this time around as we're back to the top of the order. Justin Cooper. But with it being trick-or-treat in the ballpark night, growing up, what was your favorite candy to receive trick-or-treating or even just as simpler, what is your favorite candy? Also the two-parter if you'd like. What was your favorite costume that you wore trick-or-treating growing up for Halloween? Cooper will foul the first ball he sees back to the netting. Tyler Olmstead, the pitching coach, coming out to get that, tosses it to Bubbles behind the plate. So what was your favorite candy to receive trick-or-treating or just what's your favorite candy overall? And what was your favorite costume to go trick-or-treating as growing up? Capel will throw over to first. No tag from Lee Cohn. He'll bare hand tag. But it'll be too late. Put it in the chat on Mixler or put it in the chat on the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. You might get a shout out. The 0 1 to Cooper. He fouls that one out of play on the fastball 0 2. Cooper is 1 for 2 with a single and a strikeout. Reese Anderson now 1 for 2 on the day with his leadoff single. That foul ball was presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. Keg Chicken. Here's the 0-2. Curveball in the dirt. Tibbets up and firing the throw far late as JT Mix will tag on the shoe of Reese Anderson. And curveballs in the dirt that have gotten away from Tibbets as well provided some assistance on the base pass. Not solely giving blame to one Sunfish player, but it's just some of the pitchers in the dirt have just moved runners around the bases. And last inning it proved, well, poor for the Sunfish as Taylor Justice would make his way all the way over to third. Cooper fouls this one down the right field line out of play. He's still behind 0-2. Sarah who is rooting for the Sabre Dogs, says candy corn will always be her favorite. I've never been a fan of candy corn. Some people are. I'm not one of those people. A change up. Gets Cooper to foul tip it into the glove of Carter Tibbetts for strikeout number five on the afternoon for Brooks Capel. It's the second strikeout for Justin Cooper, and there's one away in the top of the fifth inning. Right fielder Alan Greer who's 0 for 2 on the night with a strikeout and a flyout. Now up again, takes a fastball away. It's 1 and 0. Right now, all we have is candy corn in the chat. Myself, I'm a Twix guy. Twix was always my favorite to get. Or Kit Kats. Going trick-or-treating, it was more Kit Kats. Twix is my favorite candy. Trick-or-treating, it was always Kit Kats. Fastball's fouled off. It's 1 and 1. And in terms of my favorite costume, we were the type where it was always we had to make our own or just use what we had. There was one time I went as Count Dooku from Star Wars, but I was wearing a Batman costume with a cape, and then I face-painted a mustache and beard on myself. Change up, called strike two up at the chest. It's one and two. That was a fun one. Otherwise, another year, I went as Elvis. We had this Elvis costume complete with a wig and sunglasses, and I went as Elvis when I was like 12 years old. Got a lot of candy that year. The one two is popped up, right side. Mix going back, Thompson coming in. Both on the run, Thompson calls it off late. Mix will fall down as Thompson had a better read on that one and calls off his second baseman at the last second. Good call off too, as I don't think JT would have gotten one. Oh, Sarah's coming back. Her kids, on the other hand, not candy corn, but they like Reese's. Again, candy corn, that's yeah, just not my bag. Reese's, I'm not a peanut butter guy. So candy corn and Reese's. Don't they have, 
feel like they have peanut butter candy corn, and I might be mistaken. Curveball misses away from Capel to Steven Moretto, who's one for two. Sean, have you ever heard of peanut butter candy corn? Maybe I'm just going crazy. That's something that they should come out with, I feel. Peanut butter candy corn. Everyone likes peanut butter. I'm the weird one who doesn't like peanut butter. One ball, no strikes. Curveball is lined down the left field line, but hooking foul. Moretto pulled that one just a bit too much, and Cable dangling that curveball there a little dangerously. One ball, one strike with two outs and a runner on second. The Sabre Dogs trying to extend their 1 0 lead over the Sunfish here in the top of the fifth. Thank you to Charlie Cuppins listening on the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. Rooting for the Sabre Dogs, but all are welcome here. This ball's lifted into the right field line. A cone at the fence, but he's going to watch it fall into the Sunfish bullpen. Still one ball and two strikes to Moretto, who grounded out his last time up. 65 fans here at Karish Park on this warm summer's evening. Fans, come on out to Karis Park. It's a beautiful ballpark, beautiful turf, so you know games aren't really going to get rained out. Fastball runs high. It's 2-2. Two and two. Beautiful scenery. Got some nice evergreens out there in the outfield. We'll have Sean show you that in between innings. We can't do it while the pitch is happening, but beautiful scenery. Beautiful wood fencing all along the outfield. Nice seating. And we have beer. Who can say no to beer? Fastball's lined in the left field. That's a base hit. Rounding third is Anderson. He's got the green light. The throw from Beers is going to get by Dylan Cricket Danielson and Carter Tibbetts. But Moretto will stay at first. A two-out single. He's now two for three on the evening with an RBI. Two-nothing Sabre Dogs here in the top of the fifth inning. Capel left a changeup over the plate, and Moretto turned on it. Back-to-back -back innings with a run for the Sabre Dogs after Capel kept them scoreless through three. The Sunfish are yet to get on the board, and so now it's a bit more difficult for their comeback. Obviously, two runs isn't all too much, but Sunfish have been losing a lot of games with one, two runs, differential. Throw over to first, not in time. Taylor Justice, who scored the first run of the game with his leadoff single in the fourth and brought in by that sack fly of Declan Buckle, is now up. One for two tonight. Takes a fastball on the inside for strike one. The Olympics in Tokyo going on currently, and right now it's the USA women's water polo against Japan. It's 14 to 3. Throw over to first. A tag is applied, but no safer out call from Alex Shoemaker, and I think we're just implying that he was safe. Looks like Bubbles behind the plate is arguing with Alex Miklos over at third as to whether or not that was a balk by Brooks Capel. No balls and one strike here to Taylor Justice. Capel sets at the belt, checks over at first, kicks and delivers. A fastball fouled off for strike two. Two nothing Sabre Dogs after they put up another run on the two out single by Stephen Moretto. Back to back innings with a leadoff single that has allowed someone to score. The sack fly in the fourth inning scored Taylor Justice from third, this time a single to left field. Brought Reese Anderson all the way around from second. Two outs, runner on first, here's the 0-2. Runner goes, throw high, the throw down from Carter Tibbetts is a strike. JT Mix applies the tag, and Steven Moretto is out. So a caught stealing for the Sabre Dogs, the Sunfish. Only allow one. But now they're down 2-0.
after the top of the fifth. They're trying to start their comeback in a fifth inning, I think, is as good of time to do it. Carter Tibbetts, Kenneth Dutka, Jesus Lee Cone, do up for the Sunfish. Carter Tibbetts, who popped out to second base his last time up, will face Kanan Morrow for the second time, taking a fastball on the lower inside corner, but it's called ball one. The Sabre Dogs would go on and score a run in the top of the fifth inning. It's 2 0 Suris Valley. A change up, swung on and missed by Tibbetts, puts him. At a 1-1 count. Carter had a nice single in an at-bat yesterday in that ninth inning. Chases a fastball high. Gets a piece of it, though, but into the glove of Taylor Justice for strike two. A lot of good at-bats in the bottom of the ninth inning. All battling back, getting to hitter's counts. Tibbetts fouls one off the end of the bat. It goes a little bit up the first baseline before going foul. Still a 1-2 count off the changeup. But everyone battling back. Dane Frazier in that ninth inning had a seven pitch at bat. Tibbetts takes a curveball in the dirt for ball two. Seven pitch at bat before singling into right field. And it wasn't just a single, he lined it. And it was a nice hit as Tibbetts lifts this one down the first base line, but it's hooking out of play. Ethan Moore was at the fence looking like he was going to try and reach over and make the catch. Once he got out of view, it just looked like, oh, he might not. And sure enough, he didn't. So two balls, two strikes, no outs in the bottom of the fifth inning with the Sabre Dogs up by two. Morrow winds and delivers. A swing and a miss on the fastball. Sunfish just haven't gotten the timing down. Some of them have. That's strikeout number one. Surprisingly, just strikeout number one for Morrow. Sunfish have been barreling him up. Dutka, one of them, lining it in the left field his last time up. Lifts this one over the head of Justin Cooper, and it falls into left center field, rolling all the way just in front of the warning track. Dutka on his way to second will stand up with a double. So I retract that statement of not being able to get the timing down on Morrow because, well, Dutka did it right there. Heck, even JT Mix and Declan Beers were getting it down. There's just been a lot of balls hit directly at Sabre Dogs fielders. Jesus Lee Cohn, 
who ripped one into left field with Jordan Williams just jumping up a little bit and making the catch over his shoulder the last time Lee Cohn was up. Fastball just called a bit low for ball one. It's just on the edge of the plate. A bit higher would have been a perfect strike. So Kenneth Dutko with the second double of the ball game for the Sunfish out at second for Lee Cohn. This time a changeup's taken high, but it's at the chest for strike one. Jesus always got a good eye at the plate, and whenever he's got a fastball that he makes contact with, it goes sailing. A curveball will be called strike two in the inside corner. This is where it gets dangerous for the big man. Because anything he sees, he'll maybe take a hack at. A big one at that, too. Anything close, closer it is, the bigger the hack he takes. The one-two is a chopper over the head of Morrow into the glove of Buckle. The relay to first. Ethan Moore stretches out to get that one for out number two. Kenneth Ducka now over at third. And for the second straight inning, the first run for the Sunfish, just teasing them 90 feet away. Gannon Thompson, who flew out to center his last time up. Again, another hard hit ball, but just directly at Reese Anderson. Reese Anderson and Jordan Williams have been quite busy today. Change up called low for ball one. This time a changeup runs in, it's 2-0. Oh. Number of times this past week, the Sunfish have either won or lost by less than three runs. Here's the 2-0. That one had a bit of a break on it. I'm not sure if that was his changeup again or that looked like it even had a, looked more a bit like a slider. Either way, it's called strike one at the knees. Here's the 2-1. Popped up. Right side. Gannon Thompson gives a flip of his bat. Declan Buckle could build a campfire underneath that one as it's out number three. Second straight inning. A sunfish is left stranded 90 feet away as they remain scoreless after five. It's 2-0 Sabre Dogs after five innings from Karras. Taylor Justice, Ethan Moore, and Declan Buckle lead off the top of the six. Justice will take the first pitch he sees into right center field, left center field. Declan Beers coming in at the last second, making the catch from left. 
Kenneth Dutka and Norris McClure basically had a Declan Beers sized hole in between them and Beers ran right through it making the catch taking it away from the center fielder in shortstop one out as long as it was caught I think that's all the Sunfish care about not who caught it Ethan Moore who walked his last time up after flying out to second his first time around once again I'm I ask to all of you listening on both the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish Livestream on YouTube. It's Halloween or trick-or-treat night at the ballpark. What was your favorite candy to receive trick-or-treating? Or just your favorite candy in general? A change-up, jams. Ethan Moore as he fouls that one down the third base line for strike two. So far we have candy corn and Reese's. Of course, my said mine was Twix and Kit Kat. But let's hear from some other people. What was your favorite candy and what was your favorite costume going trick-or-treating as? The 0-2 is a fastball. Did he go? No, he didn't. 87 miles an hour up on Ethan Moore. The appeal down to Alex Shoemaker proved he did not go. One and two. One ball, two strike from Capel is a fastball called just a bit outside. Sun starting to set as the shadows from the evergreens out in right field starting to cast their long shadows on the right side. The 2-2 is grounded over to JT Mix. He'll play it off the short hop for out number two. Two up, two down in the top of the sixth inning. Charlie Cuppins just says chocolate. Straight chocolate. I love it. Nothing wrong with chocolate. It'll be Declan Buckle who struck out and had the first RBI of the ball game, sending Taylor Justice home in the fourth. Putting the Sabredogs up 1-0, and then it'd be the single by Steven Moretto. That would put another run on the board in the form of Reese Anderson. A change-up called strike at the bottom of the zone. Here's the 0-1, a swing and a miss on the curve ball. No balls, two strikes to Buckle. He's got almost a split. I think he wanted his front left foot to be out of the zone. It was still on the chalk. Fastball 88 up and in. It's one and two. Yeah, when he reaches out to try and call time, obviously everyone knows he's calling for time, but his foot is technically still in the batter's box. The one, two brushes him back a little bit on the fastball. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the sixth inning with the Sabre Dogs up 2 nothing over Sioux Falls. Here's the pitch. Lifted in the left field. Coming in is Buckle going, or Beers, excuse me, going out is McClure. It'll be Beers who makes the catch. Three up, three down. First time that Capo has gotten one of those this game. Apologies to Declan Beers and Declan Buckle. It's the first time this season that there's really been two Declans in the same game, and they both start with B. The Sabre Dogs up 2 0 as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning.
There's a little bit of candy throwing in between that inning for Trick or Treat at the ballpark. Assistant General Manager Zach Campbell saw me waving my arms to get a candy bar, and well, I got, he was down at the main concourse right in front of us, threw one up, and on the, on a frozen rope, hit me right in the neck, and I went down. Not going to lie, it was stunned me, getting a small bite-sized Snickers in the neck. Dylan Cricket Danielson leads things off, taking a fastball in the dirt against Kane and Morrow. Only three hits allowed by Morrow this game. That's when the Sunfish don't walk as much as when they also seem to struggle. The only two walks issued were the two leadoffs in the bottom of the first. Another fastball runs low. Morrow's longest outing of the season was six innings. As Cricket Danielson will fight off a fastball foul, it's two and one. He went six innings, allowing just three runs off five hits. In his most recent win, which came July 10th against Wheat City. Morrow currently in his sixth inning of work. Kicks and delivers, brushes back. Cricket Danielson with a curveball, it's three and one. And through five innings, he's at, actually, I don't, this one skyrocketed to shallow center field. Reese Anderson was drifting back a little bit, now coming forward. He'll make the catch. Back-to-back -back flyouts to center for Cricket Danielson. There's one away in the sixth. Well, that'll do it to you. I was wondering why my scoring was not updating. It was because I was not connected to Wi-Fi. And that'll do it to you. JT Mix, the leadoff man, or the number one in the order, rather, who's one for one with a single and a walk, swings at a breaking ball outside. It's 0 and 1. And with that fastball, Morrow is up to just 62 pitches. His fastball's in, it's now 63. So through five and a third, He's thrown just about eight or nine pitches an inning. Here's the 1-1. One, one. It's chopped down the third baseline foul past the stone-faced and statue-like lane of the over in third. That foul ball presented by Craig Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. Fourth quarter is underway between USA and Japan in women's water polo. U.S. is up 22-4 over the host city Japan, or host country, excuse me, Japan. The one, two is lined into left center field. Coming over is Reese Anderson. He'll make the catch on the run, 91 miles an hour on that one for out number two. The Sunfish have just been hitting it directly at everyone. JT Mix, Declan Beers, Kenneth Dutka, the only three hits this evening. They've gotten the timing down. A few others have as well, but they just keep hitting it at people. Once you get it to fall, that's when the sunfish will start getting going. 89 bounces off the plate on the fastball. It's 1-0. Declan, like JT, one for one with his double back in the fourth, walked in the first, was out number one via that double play in the first by Tanner Wilson. Wilson in the on-deck circle. The 1-0 is called a strike on the inside. It's 1-1. One one. If the Sunfish happen to lose tonight and the Fremont Moo happen to win, that'll be a three-game lead then for the Moo as Beers chops this one over to first. Ethan Moore plays it off the second hop, and it's a three-up, three-down on the three unassisted. The Sunfish are held scoreless through six. While the Sabre Dogs have two from Karis Park.
The Sabre Dogs hold a 2-0 lead over the Sunfish, trying to snap that two-game losing streak that started Thursday after the All-Star break. Sioux Falls already snapped their losing streak with that Thursday win and are looking to win three straight to try and gain on the Moo or at least keep pace with the Fremont Moo to try and take the Clark Division. Jordan Williams is hit on the hand. Actually, I guess it's hit on the barrel of the bat. They're calling it a foul ball, not a hit by pitch. I thought that just hit his hand. I didn't even hear the bat. Either way, the Sunfish will take it. Strike one to Jordan Williams, who got on in the second on a drop third strike, but flew out to right field in the fourth. Speaking of the Fremont Moo, let's take a quick trip around the Expedition League with a fastball called strike two on the lower inside corner. In the top of the second inning from Western Nebraska at Oregon Trail Park Stadium, the Hastings Sodbusters have a 5-0 lead over the Pioneers. Change up, called strike three on the inside. Three pitches, three strikes for Capel. That's his sixth strikeout of the evening, his first since the fifth. Aaron Suval, who's 0 for 2, steps up. From historic Moeller Field, the game that the Sunfish will have their eyes on for the rest of the weekend. Suval showed bunt, but the slider away makes him pull back. It's 1-0. It's the Fremont Moo versus the Spearfish Sasquatch. They play the Sasquatch again tomorrow before a three-game series against the Hastings Sodbusters. Change-ups called ball two inside. It's 2-0. and Capel winds and delivers. His pitch will miss low, and it's 3-0 to Aaron Suval. But the Spearfish Sasquatch in the bottom of the third from historic Moeller Field in Fremont lead the Fremont move 4-0. A fastball misses somewhere. I have no idea where. As that looked like that was right down the middle. But Aaron Suval draws a walk, and it'll be Reese Anderson. Anderson singled and scored back in the fifth to put the Sabre Dogs up 2-0. And with one out, he's got to run around first. The Canyon County Spuds and Casper Horseheads look to kick things off from Wolf Field sooner rather than later. A bunt is called foul. There was a late call as the home plate umpire is calling foul. It was a late foul call. He was about to call it fair. Carter Tibbetts had the wherewithal to keep his hand off of it, waited for it to roll foul. Alex Miklos in the third base coach's box was about to get very vocal with the home plate umpire. He's got a smile on his face. I couldn't tell if Tibbetts got a hand on it or not. If he had originally touched it, it was in foul territory, making it a fair ball and Reese Anderson would have successfully laid down a bunt. Instead, it's 0-1 as Tibbetts pulled back and let it roll foul. So no balls, one strike with a runner on first. Suval was off on the pitch. Throw over, no tag by Lee Kono. A late tag, barehanded with the ball. Still 0-1. And from Three Legends Field in Montana, the Mining City Tommyknockers and Pier Trappers will get underway, I believe, in an hour. I think they're in the Western time zone, Pacific time zone. The 0 1 is lined back into center field. Dutka almost loses it, but it gets away from him. Headed over to third is Suval. And Dutka likes to play the deke a little bit. I think Suval was on his way to third, thinking Dutka couldn't see that one. Well, that'll be called a single and might be even an E8 that allows Suval to go over to third. And with runners at the corners, one out. Walker Bullington will pull Brooks Capel. Capel goes six and a third innings, allowing two runs. But now with runners at the corners, they'll bring in John Baker. We'll get that. In just a moment, when we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube.
Six and a third inning, six hits, two walks, seven strikeouts. Seven strikeouts. Did I miss one? We'll go back and check that later. I might have gotten my count off a little bit, but seven strikeouts for Brooks Capel. Two walks, six hits. It was those six hits that really did some damage. As there are now runners at the corners with just one out for John Baker. The Sabre Dogs only up 2 nothing currently. But have some runners on for Justin Cooper. We'll take a slider low and away, 1-0. Cooper, one for three with a single and two strikeouts. John Baker making his second appearance as a Sunfish. Throws a fastball up and in for ball two. Baker out of South Dakota State. Has his fellow Jackrabbit over at first in Reese Anderson and another one in the dugout, Tyler Olmstead. The 2-0. Change up taken on the inside for strike one. His last time out came last Saturday, a week ago, against the Moo. Went two innings, allowed just one run off a hit. Three walks and a strikeout through two innings. The 2-0 runner goes. Tibbets not going to throw down and a free stolen base for Reese Anderson. Takes away the double play and puts two runners in scoring position. It's three balls and a strike now to Justin Cooper. The entire infield playing on the edge of the infield grass, waiting for a bunt or a slow dribbler, not letting anything go into the outfield. The 3-1. Is lined into center field. Dutka coming in, makes the catch. Taking up from third is Suval. The throw is going to bring Tibbets up the line. Get away. Runners going to third. The throw to Cricket Danielson gets him. Reese Anderson got a bit too aggressive on the throw home. The run does score, but Reese Anderson is out at third. Justin Cooper flew out to center, and now your scorebook is all complete. You had an F8. A run scored and then thrown out going to third. The Sabre Dogs extend their lead to three on the sack fly. And it's now stretching time at Karras Park as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. So, in fact, there was no stretching here at Karras Park. Don't know why. They instead did a potato sack race with some fans down the first base line. So, we'll hopefully get to that seventh inning stretch at the end of the seventh. That's something I've never seen before. Kanan Morrow still on the mound against the Sunfish. Throws a strike at the knees of Tanner Wilson. Wilson 0 for 2. Grounded out his first time up. Grounded into a double play in the first inning. He's been swinging it still fairly well. Takes a breaking ball. Low and in at the knees for strike two. Of course, coming off that injury, and I was asking him during BP, hey, what's, uh, how's your knee feeling? How you've been doing? He's like, swinging it, it doesn't bother me. Running, it hasn't bothered me. 
Here's the 0-2. He lines this one into the gap in right center field. That falls for a base hit. Just like that, Tanner Wilson gets a single. And Tanner went 0 for 2 on July 11th against the Moo and 0 for 3 against the Hastings Sodbusters on June 25th. Those are the only games he has not gotten a hit in. And it was that game against the Sodbusters in which he warmed up with a cowboy hat in batting practice. Tonight he didn't, and he gets his hit. 1 for 3 now for Norris McClure, who's now up, takes a fastball 88 at the knees for a strike. If Kanan Morrow can get one out in this inning, he will have officially gone the longest in any of his outings this season. He throws a change up outside. It's one and one. With that change up, Morrow is up to 73 pitches through six innings. Throw over to first, a late tag. Tanner Wilson is called safe. But that game that we were talking about earlier, the Spearfish Sasquatch and the Fremont Moo as a fastball in the dirt is scooped out by Taylor Justice for ball two. Well, that's a crucial one. It's now five to one in the top of the fourth. The Moo are on the board. They threw a no-hitter last night against the Western Nebraska Pioneers as McClure lifts this one. It falls still in the infield. He runs it out. He's called out. He lifted it. It looked like it was actually being lifted into shallow right field. Instead, it landed just in front of the outfield grass. Declan Buckle drifted over, threw it to first. Ethan Moore held on to it, and McClure is beaten out by just a half step on the fielder's choice. A 4-3 fielder's choice gets Tanner Wilson now in scoring position. The Sunfish have only been shut out once this season. It came last Monday against the Fremont Moo here at Karis Park. Carter Tibbetts swings on a changeup at the knees for strike one. He's 0 for 2, the only strikeout of the day for Kanan Morrow. So now Morrow has gone his longest ever going six and a third innings. Throws a breaking ball up and in, it's one and one. But it's kind of a lose-lose-ish for the Sunfish with the Sasquatch and Moo game. If the Sunfish lose, they're wanting the Fremont Moo to lose, so then they still only are two games behind as Tibbetts chases a train jump outside. It's one and two. And so that way they'll stay just two games behind the Moo and still have a chance of catching up if they end up losing this game here tonight. But then if the Sasquatch win and the Sunfish lose, well then the Sasquatch and the Sunfish are tied in the Clark Division. Another pitch misses away, it's two and two. So in the end, the Sunfish just would like to win this one because if they win and the Moo lose, then they're just one game behind the Moo and then they stay that one game ahead of the Spearfish Sasquatch and if they win, and the Sasquatch lose, they are two games ahead and the Moo are still just two games ahead of them. Tibbetts swings and misses on a fastball. It's two outs and one on. Two strikeouts in the game for Morrow, two strikeouts in the game for Carter Tibbetts. It's Kenneth Dutka who doubled and was left stranded at third his last time up. The lefty righty matchup, the righty Morrow, the lefty Dutka. Two outs, Tanner Wilson at second. Dutka takes a fastball on the outside corner, strike one. So if the Sunfish win, they're rooting for the Sasquatch. If the Sunfish lose, I guess they're still rooting for the Sasquatch. Dutka chases a fastball, swings and misses, it's 0-2. It'll be a close race at the top of the Clark Division as the season comes to a halt at the end of the season. Time is called by Dutka. Sasquatch are currently on a four-game winning streak, as are the Fremont Moo. 
Sioux Falls, after their two-game series Monday and Tuesday against the Western Nebraska Pioneers, travel to Spearfish for a two-game series against the Sasquatch. Fastball high and away, taken for ball one. In that three-game series against Spearfish, the Sunfish closed out the first half of the season, dropping the first two of that series. They would kick off the second half, beating the Sasquatch on that Thursday, kicking off what would be an 8-1 and one start to the second half of the season. Hard hit ground ball to Declan Buckle at second. The throw over, sails over the head of Ethan Moore. Tanner Wilson will score as that one goes out of play. The Sunfish are on the board, and Kenneth Dutka heads over to second base. So an E4 puts Kenneth Dutka on second. Tanner Wilson scores, and it's still a 3-1 to one ball game. The Sabredogs lead by two, but the Sunfish are on the board and won't be shut out again. And a comeback is sparked one run at a time. And with just seven outs remaining for the Sunfish, better to score late than never. Jesus Lee Cohn, who's 0 for 2, will take a change up on the outside corner for strike one. These two teams have the Highest fielding percentages in the Expedition League. Lee Cohn will take a change up in. Wanted to turn on that one, but took it, and it was a good take for ball one. They also have, are both in the bottom three when it comes to errors committed. The Sabre Dogs have committed the least at 55. Now 56. Lee Cohn pops this one up, but it's hooking out of play. Sioux Falls had the, has the third least with 62 errors committed. Last night, Sewers Valley had two. The Sunfish had one. One ball, two strikes to Jesus Licone with Kenneth Dutka out at second. 3-1 ball game in the bottom of the seventh. Licone chases a breaking ball outside, and that's strike three out three. But the Sunfish score one off one hit, one error, one left on base. Lee Cohn is strikeout number three of the day for Kanan Morrow. And now at the bottom of the seventh inning, or the end of the seventh inning, maybe it's stretching time finally from Karras Park. The Sunfish score one in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's now three to one Sabre Dogs as they scored one in the top of the seventh inning. Kanan Morrow had kept the Sunfish scoreless through six. 
before allowing a run in the seventh on the E4. It'll be Alan Greer leading things off. He's 0 for 3 tonight. J John Baker returns to the mound after relieving Brooks Capel. A change up from Baker called a strike, and Greer is behind 0 and 1. Once again, Capel's final stat line now that the final run crossed in the seventh. Six and a third innings, six hits, three earned runs, two walks, seven strikeouts. Slider called a strike on the lower outside corner. It's 0-2. The Lewis Division standings are close as well as the Badlands Big Sticks were able to get a win last night. And Paul Pull within just one of the Sabre Dogs and the Mining City Tommyknockers. A fastball just a bit too low makes the count one and two. But with Sewers Valley losing their last two to Sioux Falls and Mining City winning their last two, it's now 11 and eight all tied up at the top of the Lewis division. Now if the Sabre Dogs win the second half, it doesn't matter. They've already punched their ticket to the postseason. It's a foul ball presented by Keg Chicken. Order it, eat it, crave it. Goes into the netting on the left side. Count remains at one and two. But so if Sewers Valley wins the top of the Lewis Division, it would just be for bragging rights as they already have home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs for winning the Lewis Division first half. Curve ball is fouled off. It's still one and two. Mining City, who had kept it close with Suras Valley coming to the close of the first half and ended up going on a losing streak at the absolute worst time, is looking to try and punch their ticket as the second team to make it out of the Lewis division to the playoffs. The 1-2, swing and a miss on a slider high. Greer goes down swinging. Strikeout number one for John Baker. Strikeout number seven for the Sabre Dogs. Steven Moretto, two for three on the evening. Had a double in the first and an RBI single in the fifth. He grounded out to third, sandwiched in between there. He's been having a nice night at the plate. Sees a fastball outside for ball one. Casper, Wheat City, and Canyon County. The bottom three teams in that Lewis division, all under 500. Badlands just one game above 500 as this one's flown into right field. Gannon Thompson has enough time to get over there for out number two. Taylor Justice, who's one for three with a run scored. Step up with two outs in the top of the eighth inning. In the Clark Division, however, it's a bit more competitive. While the Western Nebraska Pioneers have played two less games than at least the top three teams in the Clark, they're still one game above 500 and nine and eight on their current losing streak. Showing Bunt is justice, but he'll pull back as he sees a ball outside. The Fremont Moo are at 15 and 4. The Sunfish 13 and 6. The Spearfish Sasquatch 12 and 7. Out of the other three teams in the top four, the Sunfish see the Fremont Moo twice, the Sasquatch twice, and the Western Nebraska Pioneers twice in these last several games as we close out the season. Last 14 games, in fact, or 13 games, correction. 2 0 as the ball got away from Carter Tibbetts. This one sharply grounded over to short, and McClure with the sliding backhand fires across. It can't be dug out by Jesus Licone. That ball was, seemed like it was thrown. I wouldn't say softly because that's not the correct word. Obviously, when you're that deep in the hole, that's short, and you have to have a lot behind it. But 
It looked easy enough to dig out. Not sure who they're going to give that error to, but it might be a costly one at that. As now with two outs, it'll be Ethan Moore, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. But a base runner on this late is never anything good. They're going to give that an E1 to Jesus Lee Cohn. Two outs runner at first. That one gets away from Carter Tibbetts, and Taylor Justice is going to make his way to second. Just like that, another runner in scoring position. So I want base runners this late. You can't be having that. You can't be having the errors in the field. And the Sunface don't commit all too many. That's just their 63rd this season. The 1 0 is fouled to the back netting, 1 and 1. Three runs off six hits, one error for Suris Valley. One run off four hits, one error for the Sunfish. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Grounded down the third base line, but into the Sabredogs dugout, and ricochets back into the field of play. It'll be Justice, who looked to kick it and try and pop it up and catch it himself, who can't get a hold of it. One ball and two strikes now. One ball, two strikes, two out, runner on second here in the top of the eighth. Fastball called just a bit outside. It's two and two. And Patrick Sandoval for the Los Angeles Angels in the bottom of the ninth inning with no outs, has a no-hitter through eight innings against the Minnesota Twins. Here's the 2-2, two -two. a ground ball. Bounces off the Sabre Dogs dugout once again. Rolls into the glove of Dylan Cricket Danielson. Through one and a third inning, John Baker is up to 21 pitches. Already has five in this at bat. Sun is officially set. Ron can field here at Karras Park. Completely covered in shadows. The lights are on. The 2-2 is high. Full count now to Taylor Justice and to think that we could be out of this inning if not for that costly error for the Sunfish. Here's the payoff from Baker. Checks back at second, kicks, delivers. He throws it behind and runner going down to third. He's caught off. I don't know what Justice was doing. He's now caught in a rundown. JT Mix whiffs on the, oh, he doesn't whiff on the tag. Alex Shoemaker calls him out and a costly base running mistake for the Sabre Dogs. Ethan Moore had the walk and I think Taylor Justice was trying to just catch the Sunfish off guard or maybe he thought there was a runner behind him. Either way, he's tagged out and we're out of the inning. So an E3 gets Justice on and a base running mistake gets him off. No runs, no hits, one error. One left on base for the Sabre Dogs in the top of the eighth inning. They lead by two as we head to the bottom.
Bottom of the eighth inning, the Sunfish trail by two to the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs. And they'll now see a new pitcher with Gannon Thompson leading off. It'll be Jared Breedwell making just his second appearance on the bump for Sewers Valley this season. He'll throw a fastball in the dirt for ball one to Thompson, who's 0 for 2 on the night. We'll get to Breedwell's stats in just a moment. Kanan Morrow going seven innings. Was scoreless through six before allowing one in the top of the seventh inning. And another 87-mile-an-hour fastball is in the dirt. It's 2-0 to Thompson. Four hits, one run. It was not earned. Two walks and three strikeouts for Morrow. The 2-0 is another pitch in the dirt, and it's 3-0 now to Thompson. He's seen three straight fastballs from Breedwell, who through two innings has struck out two, walked three, allowed two hits, three earned runs. Fastball right down the heart of the plate is called a strike. Oh, well, it's not two innings picks. Excuse me, I didn't see the decimal. Two-thirds of an innings pitched for Jared Breedwell this season. The 3-1 as a half swing right back at Breedwell. It was a half swing. Thompson was trying to check it. The ball got hit right back at Breedwell, and the 1-3 puts Gannon Thompson down. By his facial expression as he's walking back to the dugout slowly, you could tell he didn't want to hit that one. He accidentally did. Dylan Cricket Danielson, who has flown out to center twice, is now up with one out in the bottom of the eighth. It'll be a bit of a an adjustment as Kanan Morrow was his fastball was anywhere between 91 and about 88. While Breedwells is topping out about 88. He throws a 68 mile an hour curveball though that freezes Cricket Danielson. So that's something different as well. Not too many breaking pitches thrown by Morrow. Most of them were 81 mile an hour change up. Another 69 mile an hour curve ball. Makes it 0-2. This is not the time for the Sunfish to be seeing out some pitches. And I hear someone chirping. I can't tell if it's from the Sunfish dugout as Tyler Olmstead in the first base coach's box has a smile on his face. Another breaking ball, but this time it misses away. It's one and two. Walker Bullington is outside of the Sunfish dugout. He has had some problems with this home plate umpire bubbles since they first met in Fremont back on July 9th. The one, two, fastball low and away. It's two and two. So 87 on the fastball for Breedwell. Sunfish down by two. Three to one, Sabre Dogs in the bottom of the eighth inning. It was an E4 as Cricket Danielson chases the breaking ball outside. He's down on strikes. Just the fourth time the Sunfish have struck out today, but it's out number two in the bottom of the eighth. We flip the lineup cards over, and it's JT Mix, who's one for two. Flew out to center field. JT is at a heck of a series. He had a leaping grab that turned a double play on Thursday. Had a nice little toe tap on second yesterday to get an out and the game winning hit. And tonight he's one for three, or one for two, excuse me, with a walk as he sees a change up high. One ball, two strikes for JT. Fastball. In the dirt, it's 2-0. Two, oh. two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Still some light in the sky as the sun is not completely down to our right. But it's behind the trees, so there's no sunlight here at Karis Park. The 2-0, oh, 87 mile an hour fastball just on the corner. It's 2-1. Both of the walk-offs in Sunfish history have been against Sewers Valley. The 2-1 is a curveball. Outside corner again taken for strike two. We got twos across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. So if the Sunfish can hold Sewers Valley in the top of the ninth, 
Well, there might be another comeback in their future. Another walk-off. The 2-2 is grounded over to second. Declan Buckle comes up with it. And it's a three-up, three-down inning in the eighth. Jared Breedwell gets the job done. Forces two ground outs and strikes out one. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. Headed into the final inning at Karras Park. It's the Sewers Valley Sabredogs three, the Sioux Falls Sunfish one. Top of the ninth inning, Declan Buckle, Jordan Williams, and Aaron Suval are those due up for the Sabre Dogs as they lead three to one over the Sunfish. In between the innings, Walker Bullington and the home plate umpire, as we refer to him as Bubbles, were kind of having their way with words. Walker looked like he was complaining about some strikes called as a fastball from John Baker is chopped down the third base line via Declan Buckle. Buckle, aside from his sack fly in the fourth inning in which he scored Taylor Justice, is 0 for 2. And he's down 0-1 with no outs in the top of the ninth. Both teams have only gone with two pitchers. 84 miles an hour misses low. It's 1-1. One one. Three runs off six hits, one error for the Sabre Dogs, while Sioux Falls has one run off four hits, one error. The 1-1 one, one is taken outside on the slider. It's 2-1. Jordan Williams and Aaron Suval, who are both due up, also do not have a hit. There's a breaking ball is taken up and away for ball three. And it's in games where the Sunfish don't seem to walk as much in which the runs just aren't there. They take advantage of the walk. It's not their bats all too much that they utilize. A fastball gets away from John Baker, and Declan Buckle will have a leadoff walk. In fact, the Sunfish have only walked twice this game. And I was back in the first inning, and while they've been hitting the ball well, they've been barreling it up, They've just been hitting it right at everybody. Haven't been taking too many pitches. As you may remember back in roughly the fifth inning, runner goes, Tibbetts throw down is far to the left. So no chance even on a tag as Declan Buckle will take any form of force out out of play. And there's already a runner in scoring position for Sewers Valley. But Jordan Williams had the drop third strike in the second before flying out and striking out. Baker's change up, misses up and away. It's 2-0. Oh. But in roughly about the fifth inning, I believe it was, Kanan Morrow was 
just over 60 pitches. 2-0 is up and in. It's 3-0. Carter Tibbetts coming out to talk to his pitcher. There looks to be some motion in the bullpen. If I can see correctly, that might be Tom Sun warming up for the Sunfish. With Sioux Falls leading, or trailing rather, 3-1. to one. They'd most likely try to get out of this one without having to use another arm as there is one more game left in this series and the Sunfish are a bit short on pitching. The meeting is done on the mound and we're going to get back to Jordan Williams at the plate. So the Sunfish just haven't been seeing as many pitches at the plate. And Kanan Morrow was able to go seven innings. And when they don't walk or get on base as much, it's hard to get Runners across if there's no runners on. Four straight pitches to Jordan Williams. Four straight balls as back-to-back -back walks. Puts two on for Aaron Suval, who walked himself the last time he was up. And Tyler Olmstead's going to come out, most likely just giving who's ever in the bullpen a little more time to get warm. And with a mound visit, we'll update you on what's it looking like around the Expedition League once again. In the bottom of the first... Badlands Big Sticks and Wheat City Whiskey Jacks are still scoreless. On the bottom of the fourth from Western Nebraska, the Pioneers are on the board, and they're just down by two to the Sodbusters. It's 5-3 to three Hastings from Oregon Trail Park Stadium. Spearfish has added on to their lead from Historic Molar Field in the top of the fifth. It's the Sasquatch 6, the Fremont Moo 1. In the bottom of the third inning from Wolf Field in Idaho, the Horseheads and the Kenyon County Spuds are scoreless. And in the top of the third from Three Legends Field, the Mining City Tommyknockers are up 4-0 over the Pier Trappers. So the meeting is over. There's two runners on with no outs. Jesus Lee Cohn and Dylan Cricket Danielson at the corners are playing on the edge of the infield grass for Aaron Suval. He has shown his speed so far tonight, and it wouldn't be a surprise if he tried laying down a bunt. Instead, he takes a fastball low and in. So one ball, no strikes. Declan Buckle, the two runners go. The throw down the third. The tag is late. It bounced into the glove of Cricket Danielson, but his bringing back the glove was a bit late. The tag was on the leg of Declan Buckle, and the double steal takes any sort of force out out of contention. And now a ground ball to the infield could potentially score a run. There's the aggressiveness on the base pass for Sewers Valley that the Sunfish haven't had the opportunity to show tonight. The 2-0 gets away from Tibbetts. Here comes Buckle. The throw, the tag, it gets away from John Baker. Here comes Jordan Williams. The throw to Tibbetts. The tag is in time. So the throw from Tibbetts to Baker got away. The relay from Baker to Tibbetts is in time. Only one run will score. It's now four to one Saber Dogs with one out. Not sure what the pitch was called. I think it was just a ball. Oh, I think he just relayed it was 3-0 as that pitch got away. I kind of forgot what the count was with all the action happening and the scoreboard got cleared here at Karras Park. We're at 3-0 to Aaron Suval with nobody on one out. Fast ball up and in, and four pitches to Aaron Suval. All are balls, and he draws another walk. Walker Bullington will come out and call to his bullpen and will step away. It's 4-1 Sabre Dogs in the top of the ninth inning when we return.
Ree Sanderson will lead things off against Tom Sun. Tom Sun relieving John Baker after another run crosses here in the top of the ninth, and the Sabre Dogs are back to their three run lead with Aaron Suval out there at first base after drawing the four pitch walk. Sun making his fourth appearance for the Sunfish, his first time against the Sabre Dogs. 6.75 ERA. He throws one in the dirt, and Suval's caught between first and second. The throw from Tibbetts sails into center field, and Suval will walk into second base. The throw, I don't know if he just gripped that one too hard, did Tibbetts, or what. But I don't know where he was throwing it, and it went straight into center field. The throw down to second sent Suval heading back to first and a rundown would potentially ensue but instead Suval just gets second base and another runner in scoring position for the Sabre Dogs here in the top of the ninth inning six and two-thirds innings pitch for Tom Sun six walks 14 hits line drive over the glove of JT Mix almost identical to the one he got the other day Suval stops at third after Gannon Thompson's throw is cut off at the mound by Lee Cohn a base hit for Reese Anderson off the fastball, and there's runners at the corners with one out. JT Mix, the other night, had a, it was almost the identical same spot. Norris McClurb is even ready at second. Aaron Suval would have been a sitting duck for the double play. And I said it the other night when. JT Mix was a baller tonight. He just wishes he was a little bit taller. One out, runners at the corners. Runner goes, high chopper down the third base line. Foul ball. Tom Sun, the righty out of Beijing, China. Didn't play for the Augustana Vikings this season, but this is his third appearance at Karis Park. He's allowed nine runs, only four of them earned here at Karis. Seven of those runs were against the Moon, that 11-run seventh inning. Throw over to first just to keep Anderson close. So no balls and a strike to Justin Cooper, who's one for four this evening. The 0-1 is sent into right field. Thompson underneath it, getting ready for the tag by Suval. The catch, the tag. The throw gets by Lee Cohn, but it's not going to be in time as it pounces home. 5-1 to one Sabre Dogs on the sack fly by Justin Cooper. And this is not what you want to see as a sunfish. They were the ones who were supposed to be scoring two to tie things up. Instead, it's now 5-1, to one, and the sunfish will have a long way to come back if they want to even make this one close or send it to extras. Suval scores from third. Reese Anderson is still at first with two outs for Alan Greer, who's 0 for 4 on the night. Greer sees a fastball away for ball one. Strike called on the outside corner off the fastball. It's one and one. Again, two times this season the Sunfish have walked it off. They've made it to extra innings here at Karis Park twice. They're one and one in extras at home. One and two overall. Slider bounces into the glove of Tibbetts. The throw down to JT Mix, and he's got Reese Anderson and then some. Anderson took off late. The throw from Tibbetts redeems the one that sent it into center field. One run scores, or excuse me, two run scores off one hit. No errors. No one left on base. It's 5-1 to one Sabre Dogs. Can the Sunfish come back and extend their winning streak to three? We'll see when we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube.
Jackson Kirkpatrick will relieve Jared Breedwell and try and close out this game against the Sioux Falls Sunfish. In the two games that the Sunfish have seen Breedwell, he's pitched one in a third inning, allowed three earned runs, and that third inning came on June 13th, the time the Sunfish walked it off. The first time out of the two, you have to be more specific at these points. 89 mile an hour fastball misses up on away to Declan Beers, who's one for two on the evening. The 1 0 taken for ball two. 1 and 1 on the season, 10.43 ERA out of Western Carolina University, 6 6 righty. 10.43 ERA, 14 and two thirds innings, 21 strikeouts, 21 walks. The 2-0 is a swing and a miss on an 89 mile an hour fastball. Kirkpatrick, more, most recently, went one inning, went three up, three down against the Western Nebraska Pioneers on Sunday in their 11 to three Saber Dogs win. Beers lays off of a fastball high. It's three and one. Beers, Tanner Wilson, Norris McClure. The three do up here in the bottom of the ninth inning as the Sunfish trail five to one. Kirkpatrick, on the other hand, has not allowed an earned run since June 30th. Beers will take a fastball in and he'll draw the leadoff walk. Tanner Wilson, who's one for three tonight. Singled and scored in the seventh. The only run scored for Sioux Falls this game. But in his last seven innings of work through five games, Kirkpatrick has not allowed a single run, earned or otherwise. And he's looking to keep himself perfect through this inning. Takes a fastball, does Wilson for strike one. And by perfect, that means just perfect wise is not allowing a run as he's already allowed the walk. The 0-1 is swung on and missed, 88 miles an hour on that one. Carter Tibbetts, who is in the hole, not on deck. If everyone was to reach safely, Tibbetts would be the tying run. Wilson takes one up and in, it's 2-2. Two, two. Or one and two, correction. Five runs off seven hits, one error for Sirius Valley, one run off four hits, one error for Sioux Falls. Wilson babbles off a fastball into the netting, it's still one and two. Tomorrow night, the final game of this four game series. If the Sabre Dogs are able to take this game tonight and hold on to this 5-1 lead, they will look to even up the series with a win tomorrow night as well. Wilson lifts this one into right field. Greer charging in, will make the catch. Beers will head back to first for out number one. The Sunfish will look to take the series tomorrow, three games to one if they can. It'll be Norris McClure, who was the hero all the way back on June 13th in his first game as a Sunfish, who walked it off against Kirkpatrick. The only at-bat he's ever had against Jackson was that walk. It was a 3-1 count, and... Norris would see ball four go by and walk in Will Olson. He'll take a fastball at the knees for strike one. One out. Runner on first, bottom of the ninth inning. The Sabre Dogs are leading 5-1. First breaking ball seen this inning is taken for a strike on the outside corner. A nasty breaking ball. Curveball 74 miles an hour.
Kirkpatrick kicks and delivers another curveball. Just one, just a bit away. It's one and two. Swing and a miss. Chased a fastball away, and Norris McClure goes down swinging, and the Sunfish are down to their final out. Carter Tibbetts, 0 for 3 tonight with a pair of strikeouts. Now two out of the four strikeouts for Sioux Falls, or excuse me, two out of five. As Cricket Danielson struck out in the eighth. The Sunfish have not had a base runner since the seventh inning. Fastball away is ball one. Well, up until Declan Beers in this inning, in fact, but otherwise it was Kenneth Dutka's E4 that got him all the way to second. Tibbetts lifts this one high to the left side, but that's far out of play. I think it went on top of the football complex. One ball, one strike to the catcher. Declan Buckle and Justin Cooper up the middle, playing on the edge of the outfield grass. Steven Moretto playing deep in the hole at third as well. Well, Ethan Moore is covering at first as Carter Tibbetts needs a bit more pine tar, it seems. He fouls off a pitch into the netting, but what also went into the netting over to the left side was his bat. Haven't seen something like that all season for the Sunfish or any of their opponents. Neither here nor on the road. One ball, two strikes. Two outs with a runner on first. Tibbetts swings through a curveball and that's the ball game. Back to back strikeouts for Kirkpatrick. He recovers from a walk. And the Sunfish are halted after back-to-back -back wins. The Sabre Dogs are back on the winning track. Your final time, 9.09. And that is two hours and 33 minutes on this one. Five runs off seven hits, one error for Suarez Valley. One run off four hits, one error for Sioux Falls. Your winning pitcher, Kanan Morrow. For the Sabre Dogs, he went his longest outing of the season. Seven innings, allowing four hits, one run. It was not credited to him. It was unearned. Two walks, three strikeouts. While Brooks Capel, who had one of his best outings this evening, but just didn't have the offense to back him up, gets the loss. Six and a third innings pitch, six hits, three runs, two walks, seven strikeouts for Capel. The Sunfish now fall to 13 and 7 in the second half, 27 and 24 overall, while the Sabre Dogs improve to 12 and 8, 34 and 17 on the season. We'll take a check around the Expedition League just to see what the standings might look like. In the bottom of the fifth inning, the Spearfish Sasquatch lead 8-3 over the Fremont Moo. We have no way to know which way that'll go. So the Sunfish are now two and a half games behind Fremont. If the Moo lose, they'll be still two games behind, but will then be tied with the Spearfish Sasquatch if Spearfish holds out on that one. If Fremont ends up winning, Sioux Falls will fall three games behind Fremont, but stay a game ahead of Spearfish. While the Mining City Tommy Knockers are ahead just by two now over the Pier Trappers in the top of the fourth from Three Legends Field. For all of you Sabre Dogs fans, the Tommy Knockers need to lose this one in order to Suris Valley take a one game lead over Mining City. If the Tommy Knockers end up holding out on this one, then they'll still remain tied at 12 and eight on top of the Lewis division. Once more, two hours and 33 minutes it all is all that it took for Sewers Valley to win 5-1 to one over Sioux Falls. Kanan Morrow gets the win, Brooks Cable the loss. Sewers Valley five runs off seven hits, one error, while the Sunfish one run off four hits, one error. That one run was not earned, 
as it was the E4 from Kenneth Dutka that sent Tanner Wilson scoring. Tomorrow, the final game, the Sunfish look to take their second series against Suris Valley before hosting Western Nebraska for two games on Monday and Tuesday while the Sabredogs are looking to even up the series at two and two and not lose another one to the Sioux Falls Sunfish in their quest to take the Lewis Division title. 635 first pitch at Christmas in July. That's right, Christmas in July. Come to the ballpark wearing all your festive Christmas gear and might see Santa Claus. You might see some presents being handed out. Who knows? It'll all be a surprise. Christmas in July. Tomorrow, 635 first pitch at Karis Park. Otherwise, you can listen to it and watch it, as always, on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. In the meantime, make sure you check out the Fish Tank podcast. This week's episode features all-star Andrew Garcia and his quest to be the best MLB the show player in the world. He did succeed, but find out how on this week's episode of the Fish Tank podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. You can find that. Myself and Walker Bullington host the Fish Tank. We'll see you tomorrow, 635 first pitch between the Sunfish and the Sabre Dogs here at Karis Park and the Sunfish Radio Network and live stream on YouTube. For our producer, cameraman, and just media guy extraordinaire, Sean, I'm David Coyer. And for the rest of everybody with the Sioux Falls Sunfish organization, have a good night and go fish.